In this video, I want to show you how to uh, install your new uh, apiary um, starter pack, uh, as we call it. Uh, hopefully, you got it for Christmas or soon. And uh, it's pretty easy, but uh, we'll show in great detail how to, how to move through this. So, let's start by going and getting the Bees app. That's our newest app, and it's the, uh, the best one to use. Well, let me start this recording. Okay, we're recording now on the phone. Okay, so we want to go here and search for Broodminder. Minder Bees. Search. Okay, and the top one here is the Bees app. Uh, so uh, we might, uh, that's the one you want to get, the three, the green icon. So we're going to let that download here. And while that's happening, we've got sort of slow internet here. So while that's happening, let's open up the box and see what we have inside. So we got a couple of stickers that you can do anything you want with. Uh, a very minimal instruction card, a little filler. Okay, and this is the sub hub. So this is what's going to uh, read all the devices in the area. And you'll see more about that. A little instruction sheet um, tells you how to get going. On the back here, you'll see how to um, read the devices individually, but we're going to show you how to do it with a sub hub, which will be um, a lot faster and a lot nicer. So there's that. And then we've got the devices. So I want the cardboard, extra cardboard, stay in the box, stay in there. And then we've got 10 T2 devices. So these are temperature reading only. We also have humidity ones, but uh, the starter pack, the most valuable information you'll get from your hive is the temperature. So that's why we include them, uh, and it's more economical this way. So uh, if you want to look at your whole apiary, this is a great way to go. This is what uh, I'm doing in mine now, for instance. Uh, so let's see here. We're still downloading our app. But while we're doing that, we can start all these up. So I only need eight. So I'm going to take two and put them aside. And the way you start these guys, uh, because they're completely sealed, you'll see, is you push this button. And in a second or two, a light will come on. And when you see that light go off, you can let go of the button. And when it starts up, it'll flash for about 15 seconds. If you don't see it flash like that, then you didn't hold the button long enough. We test all these before we go by basically pushing the button for just a second and seeing that they're still reading the right value. So we'll just go through all these. There we go. And now we'll do this one. Okay, and if for some reason uh, you have trouble getting it to come on, uh, you can, sometimes the buttons stick a little bit, and you can poke them several times and sort of break them loose, and then the light should come on. Okay, and you know that they're going if they are flashing for about 15 seconds. So here we go, push. It takes about three seconds for it to light up. Then it lights up, goes off and then keep going. So this is a lot easier to do before you go out to the apiary. Just get them all running, then you know that's all good. Okay, there we go. And the last one is like that. Okay, and they're all flashing. Now once they're running, uh, we don't flash the light because that takes battery power, but if you want to see, you can push the button again and see how it flashes. That lets you know that it's running. Uh, if it doesn't flash, if it gives you a single flash, then you can uh, hold it and turn them on. But we'll check that with the app here before we go much farther. Uh, and I'm going to take a break because I have to go get a screwdriver. 
Okay, so I got a screwdriver and we're going to turn the sub hub on now. So it requires a, a small screwdriver. Um, I think we're going to try to find some and ship with the sub hubs. But when you open it up, what you'll find are a couple of battery tabs and a little note. This note says, no matter what you do, this housing will not be waterproof. So be sure and put it inside some kind of housing. Uh, you'll see in my apiary that I put it inside a, uh, a housing that we, we have in our manual. It tells how to order it and everything. So to start this, you can take it out and look at it. Uh, it's got the same sort of thing. It's got a temperature chip here, a little memory, and a microprocessor. And you pull these guys. And just make sure that the batteries are good and tight. These holders sometimes can be a little bit flaky. And the LED lit for a minute. So we saw that. I think there it goes. There it's flashing in the same way. So that's telling you that it's starting up. And then we'll take this. And we'll find the screw that's hidden under there. And put it back. It takes a pretty small screwdriver. Okay, um, and once again, the important thing is I've tried sealing this with different kinds of glue and everything, and they just won't seal. So um, put it in a Ziploc bag, put it inside uh, one of your hives, uh, put it under cover somehow so that the weather can't get to it. Okay, now we're going to open the app, and we're going to allow it to use Bluetooth, and we're going to allow it to send us notifications. And I'm going to create an account. Okay, I want to create my account. Okay, so I'm going to call that rich1 at broodminder.com. And yeah, it looks like I got it right. And let's use the password B123456 bees. Do that again. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. S. Okay, and return. And um, these terms are saying that um, we'll try not to lose your stuff, but if we do, it's uh, we're sorry. We don't collect any personal information except for a login, email, and your zip code. Uh, we feel that if we don't collect it, then we can't lose it. So we try to be really careful with that. Okay, so now we've made an account in My Broodminder, and it's talked to mybroodminder.com and made that account there, so it will be on the web also. Now let's make an apiary. So we'll do new apiary. You can do all this right from your phone. And I'm going to call this Walnut Bank. And I'm going to call it 2022 because I'm putting everything in new. And we put the postal code in. Uh, let's see here. 53589. And that lets us, when you share your data on beaccounted.org, it lets us put a pin there. It won't show exactly where you are, but it'll show you what, uh, what town and what region you're in. So we want to save that. Okay, and it's telling us we have no hives, so I want to put in my three hives now. So I'm going to hit this and say new hive. Okay, and let's put in the river hive. And you can add a description, I don't need to do that. Uh, we want to add in the hill hive. Okay, and we want to add in the swarm that I caught this summer. Save. Okay, so now we've got all those in there. And if you had more apiaries, you could put them in, more hives, you could put them in. Uh, and you can see this pull down up here has our apiaries listed. So if you look at the bottom, there's four tabs, devices, apiaries, settings, and help. 
We're in apiaries right now, and when we add our devices, they'll all show up in that apiary view. But if we only want to look at the devices, we don't care way, where we've situated them. We can go to devices and look at there. Uh, we've got all these new devices. And if you notice, this icon over on the left says nearby. That symbol is the Bluetooth symbol. And when it turns green and says nearby underneath, that means it's found the devices, that they're close by. Um, if we pull down, then they all go black until it finds them again. So you can see them populating as uh, these guys send out little, we call them advertising pulses, uh, little I'm here pulses uh, once a second or once a f every five seconds. And inside that is the temperature, uh, if it's a scale, the weights in there, that little data about what it is right now. So you can see these devices and if we find 470CAD, okay, so that's this one right here, and it's reading 69.3 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so they are all there, and we also see down here at the bottom, Subhub. So we number all our devices. Uh, the T2s all start with a 47. The Subhubs all start with a 52. The different models start with different ways. So what we'll do when we get out to the apiary, then we'll claim these devices. We wanted to make sure they're all working. One, whoops, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I only see seven. Let's see here. So I see nine C. Uh, let's see here, nine E. So we want to check this before we get out there, nine F. 9F, AA, okay, AB, okay, AC, and AD, okay, but I don't see 9D, so I wonder if I got that, oh, see, I didn't get it turned on, I must have missed it, so I'm going to hold the button down, and turn that on, Okay, and there it's flashing, and that's 9D, so, and there it showed up. Okay, so you got to be careful, and what you want to do before you go out, uh, once again, is if you pull down on this list, then all those will go black over on the left, and then they will show up, and that will only show up if they're turned on. So if they're turned off or if you're too far away, you know, it won't show them as being nearby. So that's a useful, useful thing to do. Um, okay, so what we'll do now is we'll go out to the apiary and out there then we'll claim the devices. And when we claim them, you'll see how we can tell where to put it in the hive. So see you outside. Okay, so now I'm out in the apiary and I'm going to put these uh, above each of the each of the boxes in my hives here, six here and two on a hive up there. And what's going to be easiest is I'll just read the number off it. This one says A5, OCA5. So I'll find that one, which is right there, and I will claim the device. Okay, and it's going to say where are you putting it. I want to claim it, and I'm going to select. Oops. This apiary, well, I know I have an apiary. Okay, what I should have done first, huh, there, was load up the apiary. Okay, so now we'll go back to devices go to A5, Oops. and we'll assign it to the Apiary Walnut Bank, and the hive, this is the River Hive, 
River Hive done. And location, let's see here, under inner cover. Okay, so you can see not everything always works like even we want it to work, but we're pretty close. So that one will go there. I'm going to go ahead and get the other two. Here's a three. So I'm going to claim device. Yes, claim device. And claim. Okay, and this time it'll let me select it because I got it. And this is going to be river. And the location is going to be above upper brood box. Save. And then we'll do the lower one, which is A2. Claim device. Yes, claim device. Claim. Okay, select Apiary Walnut Bank. River. And we'll put this one under the lower brood box. Okay, so now we'll set that down. And we'll just put this one under the lower box. Not real happy with me today because it's sort of dark. Okay, but you can see it doesn't take long. And this one we'll put in. Whoops. Yeah, they're not very happy. But that's okay. They'll settle down. Okay. So that's installed. <laughs> I'm covered with bees. But uh, you can see it goes in really quickly. Um, if it was a little bit warmer in, in daylight, they would probably be a little happier. But there you go. Get off there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the other two hives, and then we'll set up the sub hub. Okay, for the sub hub, I think I'm going to put it right here in the middle of these hives. I'm going to put a stake in the ground. And because it's not waterproof, I'm going to put it in this housing. And uh, I don't like this housing quite as much as the other one that's on the website. But either one will work. The main thing is you need to not let it get rained on. So, come on. I've got a little piece of plastic here that I will put under it. That keeps it from falling out the bottom. There. Okay. So it's in there. Okay, now we want to see if it works. So the cool thing about the sub hub is that it will read, it will listen to all these devices. Every 10 minutes it wakes up, listens to all the devices for a few seconds, and goes back to sleep. Listens to the devices for about 10 seconds, and then goes back to sleep. And the cool thing is then, when you come out to the apiary, first we'll claim it. Yes, claim device. Claim. Okay, so this works that way for all of our devices. Walnut Bank. Uh, we'll put it in the River Hive. That one was pretty nice. And it's going to be outside of Hive. Okay, so now we can go to our apiary, and we see now the sensors showing up in the hives that we assigned them to, and it's telling us the temperature of those. Now this may be in a, a while ago since um, I started them up inside the house. Uh, it'll take about an hour for them to get the get the outside temperature, but. We'll click on the sub hub and say show details. Now, the first thing I want to do is have it show all the devices. And what it does is it connects to this, and now it's going to look at all the devices that it can see, and it tells you what the signal level is for each one, 
and what the device is. So like I said, the 4301 uh, and E008, they're scales that were already here. The 47s are all the new devices that I just put in. And the 57 and 58 at the bottom, those are also scales that are here. So the ones I just put in, I can see they all have you know good signal levels and that it shows you every time that it receives a ping from those. So over here on the side, it's showing that you know the timestamp is going up and each time it sees one, then it it shows up. So I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight T2s is what I'd started up, so I know it's seeing them all. So I know, and they're all a good signal level, so I know it's in a good position. Okay, then I can say stop scanning, and go back, and then when you come out to read your sensors, all you have to do is say sync all devices, and it will connect to the sub hub. And this connection is a whole lot faster. Now we only have like one or two readings, and so it's super fast. But even if you have uh, several weeks worth of data, it'll just take a few seconds and it'll read the, everything at once. Uh, if you don't have this, then you go around and read each sensor individually. Um, so we'll save it and upload it. Now it's up at mybroodminder.com. Gives you an awful lot of information that basically just says everything worked okay. Uh, except for you can see like this at the bottom 4301C4 device belongs to another account. That's because it belonged to my old account uh, rich at broodminder.com and it's just telling me okay it'll keep the data here but it's not going to send it up to the web unless you own the device. So that's what it's telling us. And then we're done. We can go back and then we're all set and everything's running and we'll be able to look at the data tomorrow and show you how to look at it on the web. Okay, so here we are the next day. Um, hives are out here, bees are flying. It's a little bit nicer day than it was yesterday. Uh, and what I can do to collect the day is just click sync and then sync all devices since yesterday. And here we go. So it's going to connect to the sub hub, which is, if you remember, is right in here. And there it goes. And we're done. Save and upload. And that's it. So uh, you can see it goes a lot quicker than going around all the hives. And uh, there it's all done. We say done. Then if we go to our hives and say view chart on one of them <laughs> we had that all available right here and there's our chart from yesterday and and this morning and we can see that on all of them uh, or we can select a particular sensor if we want to see that show details okay so that gives you a quick overview and I uh, hope you enjoy it. Uh, we'll make some more videos about looking at the data and those sorts of things, but that'll get you going.